of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Hi, Greg. Good evening, Bill. Nice to see you. Good to see everyone here tonight. Um, as we normally do at the beginning of each meeting, we'll open up for guest and audience comments. <laughs> Given that there are none there, is there anybody here on the board <laughs> that's outside? Okay, we're good. All right, next item on the agenda, uh, approval of the minutes. Each of you received a copy of the minutes. Would you please take a quick look again and let me know. If somebody, I'd like to entertain a motion to accept the minutes as published. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion or any issues on this on these at all? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Correspondence. Um, there was no item of correspondence I wanted to cover at this time. Chairman's report. Um, I'm going to start with acknowledgments. This is uh, an important meeting because. It is the last time this whole entire group will be working together. And I'd like to acknowledge all of those folks, some of whom will not be um, returning, and some that hopefully will be returning. I want to acknowledge all of this group for, for your service. I want to start with Greg Laria. Um, on behalf of our board, we really want to extend our gratitude to you for the work that you've done all these years. And you're a great board member, and we really like to be a part of our organization. Thank you. I appreciate it. Cheers. I'd also like to um, extend that same gratitude to Bruce Dutch, who has been with us 12 years of service as a Board of Finance. So I can really, really grateful for all those years of service and look forward to seeing you again after the thank November you. election. And you too, Mr. Thomas. Thank you very much, Harvey. We appreciate your service and our gratitude to you for all the work that you've done. Thank you. Well. That covers our board, and now are the these board. are discharge papers. <laughs> <laughs> you have to file it in the town clerk's office. You need these two fourteen. That's right. <laughs> Which are now online, by the way. Um, <clears throat> and then Emmett, I'd also like to thank you for your service to us. The board really appreciates the work that thank you've you. done for our town, not only with your role as the first selectman, but as selectman and the many other boards you've done for a lifetime. <laughs> So thank you. And best wishes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. And it's not to go and notice that we also have people here um, that work real hard. And so, Deb, it's a good time for us to acknowledge that you give us volunteer service here, and we appreciate your good work, and we're grateful for that. And Cindy, you too. So let us, let, it's for us to let you know that we're very grateful. Okay. Next item, um, communications. You received in your packet this... Um, you see the blue um, color on there, um, the piece that has like the blue numbers in there. This is a, I'm going to let Todd explain it, but I just want to highlight. This is an article that um, the communications subcommittee compiled regarding talking about the value of East Adams endowment funds and what contributions they make to our town. I, Todd um, ran it to me and, and, and said, you know, it's probably not a big deal just to move it forward, but I did want to have you guys just give a quick look at it, because if you think it's fine, um, we'd like to uh, submit it to the East Haddam News. Todd, do you want to talk about this at all? Yes. This is uh, an update. Uh, thank you very much. This is an update from the report we, we printed in the East Haddam News last year, last spring. And um, I, I, in my, my own private poll, not that many folks saw it, but other people on the, on the board saw it. That's great. I saw other people, so maybe I was a little pessimistic. But it was always a good idea to print it again to get uh, get the word out. That's one reason. Second reason is it also shows, but what we're doing in this report, last spring we just gave one year, the last, last fiscal year, 2018, 2019. But now we're given two years, and it shows that this endowment fund is not a shot in one shot deal. It's every year. It's a heavy contributor. So that's the second message that they would, should get from this article, and we put a little blue in it to make it catch people's eyes so they see it. It's real important stuff, we believe, and people should know about it. How lucky this town is. So that's the reason why we're putting it out now, and I'd rather put it out now in the paper than later in the year in budget season because it looks like we're trying to to uh, butter our own bread. And um, but this time of year. 
it's, fr it's a fresh start of the year. It's school just started. And it put a better perspective on for them to read those facts. That was my whole, our whole idea. And so a uh, quick question on this just came to mind. Are you submitting this as finance board or subcommittee? Board of Finance. Board of Finance, very good. I, I, try, I tell the paper, but they don't really put Board of Finance sometimes. They just put it out there. But good point. Uh, I'll make a point this time to make sure they say Board of Finance. Todd, if you like, we could work together to put a heading on report from the Board of Finance, and I could turn it into a PDF that they can just pick up and print. And that'll keep them from ever. Can, when you send a PDF, it allows you to never worry about somebody changing your words around. So we can work together to turn that to a PDF. Good idea. And put the proper header on it. Sure. And in that last paragraph, maybe we'll write, for those of you who want to leave more money to the town. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's a subtle suggestion as well, Bill. You're absolutely right. All right good. Anything else from the communication subcommittee? Well, we plan also to put out the quality report. Uh, we're going to see a draft, I think, today to look yes. at. And uh, we also want to uh, put out uh, uh, periodic uh, quarterly project reports as well. Uh, I, get a, I know about you folks, I get a lot of questions in the street, at the store, at the, at the transfer station, wherever I am. What's going on? What's going on with the, with the uh, dam storm uh, water damage reconstruction? What's going on with the trees? How many trees have been cut? How many trees have been water cut? What's the latest plan? People want to know that stuff. It's important to them, not only financially, but also to uh, their safety because they're concerned about the trees. I, I would that. suggest on that one item that we consult with the Board of Selectmen. I agree. As, no. as that probably something more applicable to that group. Yeah. So we, we would uh, we would cover the article on the on the project reports would be twofold. One, the financial piece of it, <laughs> and, and the other is the progress, the actual work, and that's the Board of Selectmen. That's how we view that it should be done. Okay. It's a team effort. Anything else? That's it. Thank you. All right. Great. I'm going to move us forward to the financial needs roundtable. Each of you received in your packet um, a slide. It says draft um, Town of East Haven Capital Improvement Program Policy. And you have a copy of uh, the actual policy and the uh, capital needs request that we discussed at our last meeting. These have been slightly tweaked to refine it into uh, these two pieces have taken on some of your uh, comments and we've just updated them just a little bit. So these are in pretty good order. What you're looking here is the slide presentation that we will be utilizing when speaking with the financial needs roundtable. We set a date to present to them for I believe it's Tuesday, what's the date here, the 28th? 29th, right? 29th. So Tuesday the 29th, we will be meeting here and going through this slide presentation, explaining the process that we developed and trying to get acceptance and, and understanding and utilization of the steps we've been in the five mind. So we're looking forward to that meeting on Tuesday. Yeah, I just today, worked a little bit. Let me tell you. Because the financial needs roundtable is kind of lost in terms of what to do, how to do it. And this is what they need. And, and ideally, we're going to get to a good place. And, and we went through just prior to this meeting and just reviewed our, our, our thoughts and so that we can be prepared and ready to roll on, on Tuesday. Okay. Well, I, I'm supposed to be the, or me and somebody, I don't know. I can't make the meeting, so if somebody else wants to go or... Whoever's coming from Board of Finance, I don't know. What, what, what is the meeting? When, when is it? When is it, yes. Tuesday, it's Tuesday at 7 o'clock? Tuesday, but there's no alternates. I think you are appointed, but we'll double check. Any member of Board of Finance, that's correct. Anybody right. here is welcome to attend. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm glad to give you a personal, you know, contact you and, and, and give you a briefing on what happened. Okay. So you were appointed by name. Oh, really? Okay. Okay, very good. Um, regarding financial policies, this capital improvement plan is the last step of our financial policies. Um, and we are waiting till after the election where we have our new board to begin working on, what was our next one that we had uh, uh, targeted? Budget revisit. Budget revisit, or I, I thought, all right. 
independence of them. Just a quick question. We, Harvey and I talked about it for a while. Good. Any questions on any of the things that I covered under my chairman's report? Harvey? Great. Done. Done. I'm all set. Thank you. Uh, I'm good. I was just checking on what, or why we can't have a, um, a Ferris wheel in the middle of the town. <laughs> you don't like our example? It's, it's not. It so right. that's actually part of the process. The Ferris wheel won't be screened. Well, did we screen it out right <laughs> off? Like we it. did, yeah. Right? But what I realized, so it says total score three, and then it said according to the policy. So I didn't go back to the policy and said anything over. Anything under a three? Anything, Anything under a three gets screened. So, I mean, it still could get accepted if one can make the argument some of those other criteria make so sense. So if any one of those things became a two, this thing would get looked at? Would get at least looked at, but it would probably be at the very bottom of so the are, So our three it's, a, it's a way for oh. the committee to at least justify how they screened away a project. Yeah. That doesn't mean they have to, and, and they can work around but it. I think it was the intent of the policy. It's one, five, or nine. It's not necessarily. I it so it's it's like. Oh okay. Stop slow go maybe is the best way. Okay. To it's 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 not a. It's, I believe we just. The other ones are like the other ones are number like okay. Three and three quarters or something. Yeah. Okay. And ideally, um, this policy will get implemented during this year, and the feedback that the financial needs roundtable shares with us will allow us to make it better. So it's not, in fact, we're, our recommendation is to use it in a draft form until we figure out that this is a good thing or not. Well, so these three things go together, right? Like, That's so correct. Yep. Yeah. You know, this, this parallels what the Open Space Committee does. They have the same sort of arrangement. And it's not that you come up with a hard number that's fixed. It's that it gives you a sense of where you're at. And then you look at things that might alter it, might uh, add to or take away. But at least you got a starting point. Correct. And that's what this is going to give you, a starting point. We won't, and, and the truth in what we discovered is as we listen more and more, we want every idea regarding capital to at least get addressed. We don't want people to go around thinking that their project is not acceptable, even if it is the Ferris wheel, right? <laughs> but we want to at least make sure that people understand what that is. just want a Ferris wheel. Okay. Um, Funded more. Right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> they had an Olympics. They, they had money that didn't know what to do with. Next, next item on our agenda is our first selectman report. Um, Mr. Lyman. I agree, but we'll do this. Uh, up to our transfer sta uh, station. The gate has been ordered. The gate that we approved at the last meeting. So that will be coming in. And uh, the Willamette Waste contract was signed October 1st. And one provision that was a little bit different in it and went back at him and said, you know, what if the uh, waste, the uh, recyclable material, the values go up and we're paying perhaps a little bit too much for it. So they rewrote it that after three years, they take a look at it and every six months following. And for every dollar over 50 that they could get for recycling waste, they would reduce our cost by a dollar per ton. It's a nice little feature that, uh, so if, if for some reason recyclables become truly valuable again, we're going to get a benefit from that. Very good. So that's a nice feature that, uh, and they were very generous in terms of coming back to it. Uh, financially round table on the 29th, the East Hanover Free Public Library was approved, uh, town meeting on October 1st, and we are in the process now of having the paperwork finished. Our lawyer, Rich Roberts, and Scott Jezik for the uh, East Town Free Public Library Reading Room Association are working together to get that paperwork done. So we're going to own it, and we're going to have some responsibilities there now, and probably some maintenance we're going to have to worry about that's been postponed pending our actually owning the bill. Um, Just, just one other thought. Uh, Eric Smith, who has been with our Public Works Department for quite some time, left. And we are posted and we are about to interview for replacement for him. Public Works does remain shorthanded. They got a tremendous amount on their plate and they need all the help they can get. Are they short more than that one person? They certainly could use more. I mean, as far as budgeted headcount. 
are they is it just that one vacancy uh, we've had uh, one worker who has been out ill and we've had a temporary replacement the piece is willing to let us do that and that individual has uh, responded looking for that full-time position so we may be looking for another part-time to cover that one position and that would give us a full count at that point good thank you Before we go around the table, I just want to make note, I just observed, it could be my eyesight, but I just jumped over tax collection, so we'll come to that after we speak with, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you guys a chance to speak with Dr. Swackland. Did you have any questions? No, I did not have any questions. How about you? Uh, one. On? Uh, questions on the first selectors report? Yes. Um, I don't, I, maybe I was asleep, but what about the storm water drainage reconstruction? We need to work. Well, how's that work? From the storm? Yeah. That's uh, major public works, and I think we're going to address that separately. Okay. In this, uh, tonight you are? Oh, down here in, on number 11, new business? That's, that's, I believe, where it's going to be at. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. The challenge is, regrettably, we did not, from a finance board perspective, get all the data. There were two back to back vacations that occurred, so we don't have that with us right now today. I see. Beth and I, we were both out. And she came back today to have to answer to a bunch of FEMA questions. So that rose to the top of the pile. Um, so we won't wait till your next meeting. We'll assemble it and get it out to you. But she, she came back to an onslaught of priorities. And we want to keep FEMA happy. Right. We have had a draft, but we want to handle the picture she touches on it. Did you have any other questions, Tom? Um. <coughs> I have one question. Well, my question is, there, I, I was told a while ago, and I thank you very much for telling us that, that the cost of electricity in this building is abnormally high, higher than what's expected. So I asked that question at the Board of Selectmen meeting last uh, Wednesday, and the committee is working on it, but they don't have an answer yet. So they have a meeting this Thursday, which I plan to attend and help them out, because I used to work, work HVAC myself. And uh, a lot of things, a lot of variables. They have some ideas how they can find the, the root cause of the problem. But anyway, it's a pretty big cost. So, right? first part of the question is, you're saying that you're hearing that it's at, it's exceptionally high. Is is that tra is that fact correct? The bills are higher than our initial budget assumptions. Again, they were assumptions, and based on how much the building would be used, etc. But to Todd's point, they are working with the committee. With regard to, and Emma can speak to it as well, humidity levels, air conditioning levels, temperature levels. So they are working on that. It seems like a lot of the systems are competing with each other. They're heating it up to dry it out, and then they're cooling it down to bring it back down to temperature. And they're finding ways of adjusting it so this can be better. Some discussion that you may need different settings in the winter from what you have in the summer. You may have to have two sets of settings. So the bottom line is an, 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 an issue has been addressed or, or identified, and now you're looking at some of those causes of what that can be and how can you make it better. Okay, good. Anything else, Todd? That's it. Thank you. Tracy, how about you? Um, no. We're, this is, what, our second year of operation? Right. Uh, well, year and a half. Yeah. yeah, so the first year was a huge estimate. So we've only got one year of history. And, and, you know, some of it was based on a little bit of the schools and a little just... Right, yeah, size of the, the size of the building, yeah. yeah. So from a financing perspective, it's easy. It, it's impossible to really nail it. However, if there are opportunities of improvement, we want to pursue There are, um, there are some um, issues the committee is looking into, and they encourage anyone to attend the meeting. Okay, good. Meeting. All right, forgive me for overlooking it, but let me jump backward on my agenda to the tax collector report. Any questions on this at all? I still maintain a very healthy collection rate. I'll start on that side. Tracy, did you have any questions? No. Are you talk? Um, no, but I can ask Cindy later. I, uh, I'm a little confused still by the report, so I don't want to bore you folks with uh, my questions. 
I'll, I'll get with Cindy or Denise uh, on my own. Thank you. Now we'll move forward um, to where we started before with the, um, or where we should be with the finance director's report. And as we get started here, what I want to talk about is the development of the new quarterly summary and analysis. We have been using a system where we're looking month to month, and the conversation came up, why can't we, can we get a roll up, if you would? What you have in front of you is an accurate roll up that has been developed. And there's two, there's two points I want to make here. First, we are, as, as, as with some of the other things that we've been working on, we're putting this together so we can make it easy for you to kind of get a bird's eye view of where we stand. We are open to suggestions, so it's not a hard and fast uh, decision. <clears throat> this report itself may trigger a bunch of questions. I want to remind you that some of the questions might be, I, I'm looking at, I know Todd, you had generated a number of questions here. And a lot of these questions were settled during our budget process. So we may be able to maybe wrap that into your, your list of, of you know, uh, questions you want to talk to Cindy, because all of these have the answers and we can get them for you. I'm, I'm not certain whether we want to go back and revisit all of it today. Um, but we may want to look at those because some of this stuff is, it's, it's important for you to know, and yet it's also important for us to move on with some of the issues that we face with our business. Also, it's important for us to know so we can explain it to the, to the taxpayers when we ask it. Yeah, and, and I want to encourage you to, to be able to reach out. If you have questions like these, I like that you put it out for her in writing. She's able to provide us an answer. We can, we can give you that stuff. And, and perhaps even a little bit, um, you know, you reach out and give her a call too, and she can answer the questions for you. I, I, I don't want to discourage that kind of communication you can have. If you have questions, you can ask. Okay. okay. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Cindy to give us an overview of how this is working. And, and we also spent a little time when we first looked at it talking about how we can man, make this look easy for us to present in the East Adam News on a quarterly basis. Correct? I have to that as well. So why don't you proceed? So the budget policy, and I just put it down at the bottom to indicate the components of the report, says that the finance director shall prepare quarterly reports that include forecast of annual revenue and expenditures based on actual results and knowledge of spending trends and operations. These reports shall explain significant revenue and expenditure variances and indicate trends that may require remediation. And the report report shall include data for the prior year actual results, current year projected, the current year actual for the adopted budget and targets for the upcoming year. And then uh, the finance director will review the activities related to performance monitoring and reporting and expl explanations will be given. First of all, on your sheet, you'll see something highlighted in yellow. <clears throat> Todd had asked a question about last year's year to date, and we built a whole new budget presentation. And in one section, if anyone knows about linking spreadsheets, I grabbed a long link and pulled it down several lines. So it's been corrected, um, is what you're going to see for budgets was built brand new. So when you say it's been corrected, is... That yellow number is the correct number from what you were emailed. Gotcha. So you have the 2018 and the 2019 um, budget presentation in front of you. Last year at 25% of the year, 16% of the budget was expended this year. 19% of the budget was expended. Not off that much. The two areas I'm citing for you that I'm watching, one of a concern, number one, is in alluding to the first slideman's report. We have some staffing transitions at Public Works. One is our mechanic. His last day is the end of this week, I believe, and we have not really had an adequate response to the vacancy. So instead of some repairs being completed in-house, we're going to have to send things out. So we'll track carefully what that means. So while we won't be paying a salary, we will be paying purchase services, which could be much greater. Then the second item to bring to your attention is the teacher's retirement. It's not in the governor's budget, so that um, we're not going to be expending that this year. So that's 61000 the good. And then down with revenue, 
Last year we were at 46% of the budget at this time, and this year we're at 45. So we're, we're trending pretty um, on track of last year. Why don't, I'm, I'm going to bring the board up for questions. I do, I, I just had an observation here though, and maybe, maybe it's in here and we talked about it and I, and I don't see it. We don't work on a calendar year budget. And so at some point, maybe in the footnotes, just to, oh, I'm, I'm thinking about as far as the quarterly Same report. thing to me. This is July to September. Yeah. Is your point. This yes. is the first yeah. quarter. July quarter, so right, but no, first no, quarter is in July. The foot, is in the footnotes, just indicate in there somewhere yeah. that work, you know, the yeah, town that. operates on a uh, June 30 calendar budget. I did budget. make that edit for the East Haven News. I didn't reprint it. Oh, that's what I was talking but about. Okay, it's not really as necessary. This, by the way, folks, this one you're looking at is the um, the detailed copy that we received as board members and would be available on the on the website. This is the. East Haven, East Haven News, news version. It's the smaller portion. Do you and see the smaller one? Instead of printing it, I, because, but I indicated how the, the budget year works on this, so I've updated that. Okay, yeah. good. So in my, in my estimation, it's not critical for our notes, because we all know we have a June 30 budget, or uh, fiscal year. It's important for the town when it gets published so they understand our first quarter is really mm -hmm. right now. Okay, good, good, good. All right, now, if, if anything else you want to cover, Cindy? Do you want me to walk through this new setup before, or do you want to do quarterly? Um, I'm going to go through the new setup first, and then I'll turn everything to questions. Can I just ask ones. one minor question? So on everything, you have revised budget. So the reason there's a revised budget is we voted to use $75,000 of contingency for the SRO. So there was a transfer from Board of Finance to police. Okay. And, and it's noted, you'll see it on. No, I, I, I know. So that's why it's revised because, and then you voted to use $9,000 to get the transfer to station gate. So that's why it becomes revised. That would be important to be in, in the, uh, at least the East Haddam News as a footnote. Okay. Yeah. I know, I know that that's, I know that that's why, and I know that that's like the official, you know, do you want us to try to get like a approved and revised? I'm is, just is that, trying. Is that maybe right? a better so place to go? If I'm a person who pays attention, you know, a little bit, I'm going to go revise budget. What, what, what did I, we vote on this budget? What is revised? What I so, can do is add a transfers and amendments column and revise. For this, I didn't have enough room, but I can do that for the East Haddam News, and then people can see public safety with a footnote going up 75000 for the SRO and capital going up 9000 for the gate and the board of finance going down the corresponding issue. Because, I mean, honestly, that's that's weeds. Like, the bottom line is about, it's the same. Like, I know that, I'm just, you know. But for, it is a revised budget. It's been okay. voted on by town meeting and this board. Okay. That's the important message. It's been voted on. Revise means vote on. Revise doesn't mean it's unilateral. It's first left and dictated to the financial director or the board of finance, but it was voted on. That's why all you got to say, and they'll, they'll put everything to rest. Would we be able to get some? So these are all good. What we want to do is prevent people getting the wrong impression of all the good communication we're trying to do. Would it be possible to include footnotes in the East Haddam into the things so that goes into the East Haddam so they can actually see sort of the footnotes that you and wrote. For this, I can do approved budget, amendments, transfers, revised budget, and actual. Okay. And, and footnote what happened and how much we voted Yeah, it's not, it's not critical for our board because if any one of us has a question, one, we should know, and two, you can explain it. This is not critical because this is really for us. Absolutely, that would take me five minutes to do. But if we could do it for this one that gets published, I think that's, that's I'll make those important. changes and email it to the board. Okay. All right. So, do you want? Why don't you go move forward with the other portion, and then I'll come through with everyone, and we can ask our own questions. And then on this, it says amended. So, do you want to make it all the same? We can say <laughs> So, number one, I was trying to make budget reporting a little easier for my office, and not creating a new budget report each month. I also thought, wouldn't it be great for the board to just see when expenditures occur? 
for example, we pay the, the state police insurance. So mm -hmm. it's not it's not spread out over 12 months. So this report is going to show you where we were, at the total last year's actual, where we were at that month in time, so for September, <coughs> and the expenditures each month, and then the total expended is going to show you the cumulative expenditures. So you can see the ebbs and flows and, and where some expenditures are made. For instance, uh, risk management, which is our workers' comp and liability auto and property is paid quarterly. Again, back to state police, that's paid yearly. Other fees are paid once a year. So it looks like it's pretty high, but it, it'll help you in understanding the trend. Um, may, may I add something to this, Cindy? The idea here is if you can recall what we used to get as a report before, it was month to day, you know, this in the September period during that last during that last cycle, and you saw the year before that. Here what you're getting is kind of like when you get an Excel spreadsheet and you can open it up and you get 12 additional sleeves. So you can see as each month goes forward, we will just add October's information in the November meeting and then update it with October year to date and then at the end. So you'll always have the day, the year to date where we were, but you'll also know the detail. And then from year to year, you can see kind of the ebbs and flows of the cash flows that we make. So in looking at general government, and, and one thing, we made a lot of budget changes last year and it can get confusing. So shared services is now under general government and not transfers. So when you look at the totals, and that was one of Dodd's questions, it's changed a little because we shifted. So what, I go back and forth on making the changes because if someone was to pull up last year's September year to date report, I was trying to match to what we have on the website and that confused people as to what, what little buckets we put in. So we did some shifting of things so if we can't not fully match up with going forward, we should be fine. So that's why, and if you look at interfund transfers, last year, the budget was 31. It said it was 33.1 million, but it was really for something. So that was just a shifting of how we've taken care of some different things this year. Um, also, just quick, because Kyle had a couple questions, I probably can't answer for here. When you look at the quarterly report, especially like in revenue, it's rolled up completely. So the number for taxes includes taxes, interest, penalties, suspense, airplane pilot, tax collection fees, all of that. So it's it's a roll up it, it, of the grand total. So if you, it shows that 14 million, 824, 641 in taxes was collected. And if you go to page four in the total revenue, that's what matches up. So okay. it's a roll up. Um, Again, as you, as you walk through this month by month, page three has the Board of Finance contingency. So this used to appear for the people that have been on the board a while. Remember, we used to have a long money total. We haven't had to have this for a while. So the Board of Finance contingency is $165,000. So this is showing that you transferred 75,000 out to police and 9,000 out to the transfer station date and you have 81,000 remaining. What happens when you use contingency is the board of finance budget goes down and the budget the money is going to goes up. It's a transfer. So this, you will have this ongoing total for the rest of the year, especially should you, so you can be reminded what you've used in contingency. Sort of a, like our checking account balance. Right, right. Good. So you've got that. Moving on to revenues, one thing to call your attention to, and there was a great article in the key fan off right for one guy of one. Connecticut mirror. Connecticut mirror, yeah. At this time last year we had the town made road fund money. We oh, don't this year. Good. The, the governor is holding County Road hostage right now, for lack of a better way. He's he's using it as leverage to get something he wants. So we haven't had County Road. Fortunately, we don't rely on it 
heavily for snow removal and other things like other towns. So it's not, you know, other towns, they use their town A road for snow. So they're feeling the pressure. We have never built it in for that. So the budgeted amount for town A road has been the same for the past two years. And um, I'll alert you when we get the money, but until the bonding's released, we won't get it. So this 325-170 doesn't really exist? It does. It does, but normally we get our first payment in September and the second payment later after the first of the year. But the governor's holding any bonding. Because they bond to give us town A road. So the money, the bottom line, the money isn't there yet. It's not there yet. And it might not be there. It's the state well, to the state budget. Yeah, I, I know. Mean, you know. I am hopeful we'll get it, yeah. but you, you know, we've had these conversations before. They're a little tricky. That's a big, big chunk of change. It is a big chunk of change. So hopefully, well, just like what was it last year, the budget was much more than the 102000 and they reduced it. So, you know, we kind of bob and weave. So when we have the quarterly report and we're saying last year we were at 46% of the budget for revenue and this year is 45, the town A road is the, the biggest factor in that. Uh, if you turn to page five, the building department fees, the question Todd had, the new fees went into effect October 1st. So they're um, not in there yet. Mm -hmm. So they're not impacted. Um, all the other fees and revenues seem to be tracking. And again, I've highlighted in yellow when I pulled the wrong link and dragged it all down. A debt service. But again, we're looking now at the corrected copy. Right. Yellow is, is But getting back to the building permit fees. fees. That I have one November column on November page five. November is 68,000. So that okay. can't be right. On page five, you've got actuals oh. in November. Oh, right. Where? On page five. Page five, you have we, yeah, we all have a November data for November. Data in it. Oh, just disregard that. Sorry. That's loose, loose electrons. Yes. I'll you yeah, know what I, it is? When I couldn't, when I had an issue, I went and grabbed my data and dropped it and didn't clear it. I did that very quickly today. Sorry about that. It's been a long day. I like to get back to the building department permit fees. So the $135,000, that budget was made assuming that it would be the old fee schedule. Right. Mm -hmm. So now we should expect something less than that now. We estimate no more than $8,000. Less, that's all? Yeah. Okay. But I will update the sheet and get it all to you. And add the revised budget changes Chasey wanted. I'll do some updates and let you all get a look at it. I'll get that out in the next few days. Um, also, jumping around debt service, a reminder we have in the, we paid our first payments of this building. So, in on page two for September, you'll see 658000 Be on your expenditure? Yeah. yeah. Page two. You'll see 658000 If you recall, USDA is a 40-year amortization. We're paying it in 20. So this is based on the 40-year amortization because I have to notice them 30 days to send the rest. So you'll see a principal payment under October as well. So you're going to have to pay twice? I have to pay twice. I okay. can't. They won't take it in two installments. In one installment. No, I have to space it out. Um, also on page two, as a reminder, town garage, we don't have that any longer because those the maintenance and supplies were brought into this building and anything else into public works. Town garage was largely, if you recall, paper towels, toilet paper, cleaning services for all the other buildings. So they got put into central services. So they were moved out. But not oil or oil filters or grease. None of that. That's all, that was all under public works to begin with. So yeah, it, should be. it was a, it was probably just something that occurred over time. Um, so that one's gone. And then again, looking at some of the budgets, and Todd, you and I can talk offline later because I think I can answer a lot of your questions. You did have a question on conservation, which is a good one to bring up. If you recall, we budgeted for a lot of things under capital that really should have been in operating and move them to special revenue funds. So in conservation, there's $17,000. That's in the operating budget that gets sweeped over into that multi-year special revenue fund. 
Same thing for land use. There's a 25,000 that sweeps over to WPCA. We did that for recreation as well. So at the beginning of the year, I posted those all over to those special revenue funds. Because we used to fund conservation oversight around 10,000, and then meeting with Mr. Smith and reviewing the conservation operating budget, it was, it was deemed that many of those items really were multi-year multi, multi items and made more sense to go into the special revenue fund and not in the operating budget where the commission would lose the money. So any of those sweeps over to those other funds I take care of during the beginning of the year. So that's why the conservation has that expenditure. It's not gone, it's just in another pot for them to expend. Okay. Uh well, we can talk about it. I don't quite understand all this yet. But it just caught my eye, $18,000 in one month. It's like we never spent that kind of money. So. That's because 17000 of it went into the special revenue fund. Mm. Okay, thank you. And then I think the rest, Todd's questions and some answers later, but I will update these budget reports for you and get those recommendations in, and I welcome your feedback on those. I've also provided you with capital, which is pretty straightforward. Um, another question was if there's a half a million left in the municipal office complex, what is required to expend those monies? Mm -hmm. They were approved at referendum. The committee has the authority to expend those monies. And the town radio project, money's been spent on, and we have two people here on the committee, on equipment and antenna, et cetera, and it's my understanding there'll be some installations on Mount Parnassus, Boothville, and Buckley Hill shortly moving forward with that project. So these monies that were voted on at referendum fall to the committee. And then okay. the rest, Is this report something that you um, can also generate each quarter? Is this something? You'll get monthly. Okay. You'll get capital monthly. And then this is updated. There's nothing um, to unusual. The only one I would call your slight attention to is on page three, Bone Mill Bridge. The state made a payment to us in advance, and the project came in much under. So I've accounted for it appropriately with the auditors, but we're going to probably have to return money to the state because we underspent so much from the initial projection. So we're just going to hold long. that until they give us the... Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you a town, you give me a town, I'll give you that. <laughs> we'll, we'll barter. So that you might hear from me later, but, and I think that's good news to say that we found, we were able to bring a project in under budget. Mm -hmm. On time. And Foxtown is another one. Foxtown, we're having some issues on the timing of that. And there's going to be some stipulated damages, and I really can't speak to what that all comes into yet, but I'll update you as I have more information because it wasn't completed on time and the contract was built with stipulated damages. Okay. Very nice. Very good work, Cindy. I'd like to now open it up to... Um, some of the board members to maybe ask you specific questions. Herb, did you have anything? Oh, you no. Okay. I don't have any questions. Thank you. Okay. I have a question for the future. When the FEMA starts giving us money back, where's that money going to show up in your balance sheet? It will not. Sh it will be part of your capital report because it's contained in the capital projects fund. I'll start your report to it. And Bill, if you don't mind, I can spend two minutes on FEMA. We met with FEMA. FEMA, um, and that's why it was important for Beth to be with them today. FEMA is going to pay us back or reimburse us based on project, and they've broken our projects in town into three sections. The first one being emergency work, for which Beth has put in for reimbursement, and we're waiting to hear the results of that. And that's part of the reason they wanted to conference call and meet with her today, was they, they had some questions. The second project they're looking at is the Neptune Lane um, Ave Bridge. And then the third is everything else. And they'll only reimburse as we get through each of them. The treasurer and I, and I spoke with both Bill and Emmett, we don't have a cash flow issue, but the amount of FEMA has us a little nervous. And I'm going to be talking to Bond Council and keep you all informed. 
We will be issuing short-term debt, renewing it in February. We may want to tack on a little to carry us for FEMA until we're reimbursed. Because while we have the cash flow, Kathy and I are a little concerned about depleting us too much. So I don't know if bond councils will tell us that's something what we can do or what the legislative action is, but I want you all to know that we're keeping an eye on that because we could be out $3 million waiting for reimbursement. Mm -hmm. and Kathy and I didn't feel comfortable with that. So we can plan for it if we need to, which is also great on this monthly budget. We haven't had cash flow issues, but it really will help in the future with cash flow projections to, to really outline it. So we'll keep you posted on FEMA. When will you know closer to that? The, the, the bond date, you said the issuing, we're going to be doing it in February anyway. February. So we have a... So we got a couple of meetings more before you have to make right. that determination. Right, so if you need to take any action, I'll, I'll bring it forward for your consideration. But it's just, we had hoped in the past you would do an incremental request and you get money back. They're not doing oh, it at okay. this time. Right. It's coming in three pieces. And the, and the dirt roads could take quite some time, the gravel roads. And they could they could tack up pretty high, so I just want you to know we're watching it carefully, and we may need you to take some action to, for an interim measure. Great, Todd. Anything else? That's it. Thank you, Tracy. Um, hang on. <coughs> I'm sorry. Hang on. I'm just trying to make a note. Okay. Um, a couple of things on the expenditure summary. So under Board of Finance expenditures, um, shouldn't there be 75000 in July for the transfer? No, because what happens is your original budget started at, you guys can handle smaller Can you identify where you're looking right now, please? What page oh, I, one? just on page one and then the footnote on page three. So if you can handle smaller print, I'll start with original budget amended. Transfers in. This is, this is fine. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, that's what yeah. I'm like, do I hand out magnifying glasses no. to each of you? So no. here's a good example. Board of Finance, your original budget was 209150 So you took out 90000 Yeah. Our original Board of Finance budget was two hundred nine one fifty. Right. Where are you looking right? Oh, Board of Finance. Approved, okay. Approved in the budget book. The okay. reason was you built that 75000 in for the SRO. Right. So we've taken out 75000 for the SRO, which brings you down to Richard. We took out the additional nine for the transfer yeah. station gate. Right. So that's why you're reduced. All right, so, so that to, makes it 134, 150. So if you come to page three, and I know I'm jumping all around, your contingency was 165. Now your contingency budget's 81,000. So your budget goes down as the other budgets go up. The money's not spent out of your account. We move it to the actual budget where it's being spent. Because if we paid for the SRO to board of finance, it would skew your budget completely. Say that last line again. If we were to pay for the SRO at a board of finance. Oh, right, 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 right. So you did a transfer out of our contingency. So it's not an expenditure, it's a transfer. It's a transfer. Okay. I think when I do the sheet, and, and I'll double check everything for you, when I do the sheet for the East Haddon News and show it, it'll be much more. Okay. It'll flow better for you. Transfer, okay, okay. Okay, and then um, on the the town of the East Side of News thing, uh, can we add the percentage expended? Because as opposed to having everybody do the math, you know, in theory, if you're through the first quarter, you should have spent twenty five percent of your budget or whatever, right? So I think it just gives people a quick eyeball of no, I you know. You give me, I'll give me a lot of great ideas that I can put together for your review. Yeah. That's it. That's all I have. That's it, Tracy? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, there's a lot of changes here, but I'm hoping coming forward will be easier for you all to read. 
thing. I'm sorry. I know it's like completely impossible. Before to bed, like we've got to, you know. Is there are there any kind of subheadings that you could just add a few to make it so it's just not so yay the huge twenty million dollar board of ed budget so spent a million dollars. So there's a new law in effect until Christmas. Oh, well, <laughs> what would that be? So the new law states that the board of ed must report in some way, shape, or form their budget and their anticipated revenues and stuff. Now the state legislature put this into place. But they didn't give us any template. It's not like they said to every town, okay. That's so like, I've been yeah. reaching out to colleagues, but ultimately, you know, Tracy runs the board of it. The board of it gets a report that's by salaries, benefits. Right. That's what, and, yeah. And then by school. So, and I, I'm not speaking on behalf of the board of finance, that board of education, Mr. Reese and Mr. Perry need to look at it, but ultimately, once we've established this template and I've consulted with some of my colleagues, you will be receiving, along with your quarterly report, a Board of Ed quarterly report that gives a projection and um, it'll be a one pager ultimately. I, and I, God, God bless you, because I don't know how you make it, like, you know, is, is putting down the, the elementary school budget useful? I don't know, I probably not, but. Will it will it have a look and feel similar to what you're gonna be doing with us? Um it's gonna be a little different based on requirements. But um it would be great if they gave us a template to use. And I'm on a list serve with all the other school business managers and it's like so what do they want us to do? <laughs> and they, they you're kinda of on your own. So once we come up with a template that we feel is both informative and in keeping with the statute, you'll get it. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me. See, I Plus, should be no, with you. Yeah. <coughs> Actually, you would do a template. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like that ties in with some of the rumors we heard earlier in the year about um, establishing a separate tax district for schools versus town budgets. So there'll be separate financial reporting. Hopefully it doesn't go down that road. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, that's just asking. But that's all brand new. It's been in effect until the first. Yeah. I don't even know how many communities are aware of it, and we're just trying to all give some guidance. Or I would love to have some consistency. Otherwise, it doesn't really add value. What's the point? Yeah. The town. yeah. What does CCM think about it? You got any they ideas? We don't really dive into that. That's that's DOE. But I'm I'm trying to. I'm meeting with another school business official on Wednesday on another matter and see what she's doing. Because we want to make sure, number one, we're compliant with the law, and number two, it's a useful document. Piece of financial report, yeah. Awesome. But another awesome. new requirement. Awesome. Mr. Chairman, I have one more question. This is all good stuff. This is real good. My next question is how soon can you get it in the East Town News so it's timely? I've got to get it to all of you. Bless, and then we, I'm thinking the next couple of weeks. Good. Okay, I'll put the endowment article in next week. The week after, maybe we'll put this in. And you, you want to give me a call tomorrow? We'll get that arranged into a PDF so that you can go straight to yeah. them. I'll come meet with you tomorrow. Can I meet with you tomorrow night? Are you busy? Before 7 o'clock. Mm hmm. I think I'm free. Is there a port of that? Well, good. I, I, have a, I have a meeting somewhere in the afternoon, but yeah, it'd be great. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll give you a call just to be a better time, an exact time. Thank you very much. Okay. Next item, um, under finance director, you have a copy of the draft budget calendar in front of you. It's just a start to think about. I took, I took this... Uh, Took it right away and took a look at it and ran it through my calendar. I'd, I'd invite all of you to maybe check it out against yours too so that you can give us some feedback. The one point that I do think is pertinent has to do with when we do the tri-board meeting and um, note that it's scheduled on the same date as our finance board meeting, which is December 9th. So again, this is open. Um, we're going to, presuming there's no issues with that, I believe um, 
we're going to be trying to coordinate with the Board of Education, the other board, and the boards of selectmen. So, uh, given the election and everything, it's on everyone's calendars, but we have a whole host of new people that may have conflicts. But please, as I mentioned earlier, please review this. If you have any issues with any of the dates or you find something that we may have overlooked, please communicate that before we bring it forward. I do on the calendar thing, um, you, you asked a question a moment ago about CCM. Um, do you have the date? Is it the 3rd of December? I have it here, I think. Yeah, December 3rd. So the annual convention is held at the casino, Foxwoods, correct? Foxwoods. And um, any any of you that would enjoy attending, please please communicate that to Cindy. It's an excellent day. It's a long day. And right now they're going breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's, uh, and, but the vendors in the workshops are most beneficial. It's a, during, so it's during the week? Yeah, yeah the 3rd okay. of, yep. of December. And what are the topics of discussion? You go to their website and you click on convention because they're, during each workshop session, there's usually four options. Yeah, what they'll typically do is breakout workshops where you can go through a list of them and all right, here's what's offered and you can attend whichever you think is most pertinent. And one thing they're doing this year, which I think is awesome, because usually the conventions prior to the um, election, they're having for every one of the workshops, they have an all day for newly elected officials walking them through the full gamut, which I think is very helpful for you. It is by far one of the, if you're interested in doing some networking with other people in our position, it's a great place to walk around, shake hands, and meet some folks, and really share some insights and things you might be considering. Okay, I will move us forward. We are now in liaison reports. Any liaison reports? Nothing. I attended the uh, Board of Ed meeting uh, early October. Uh, they're currently in discussion on their capital improvement needs and assessments. Um, priority one is most likely going to be the elementary school envelope, the windows, doors, making that building airtight again. Uh, they've got some AC needs. Uh, they're looking into a track. They've got uh, irrigation as well. Um, that's a bigger project than you would think because for those of you that know the high school area, there's a, a baseball field up top. There's a soccer field down below, and then over by the parking lot, there's another set of fields for softball and other activities. So it's really three systems that would have to work together. Um, and in addition to that, uh, they would probably put a restroom facilities down near the soccer field and track area as well. So those are some of their large items that they are working on right now uh, with their committees. Uh, the baseball field uh, is done. Yeah, they were laying sod there today. So um, that project is pretty darn close to done. Uh, the repaving of the parking lot and everything was ready for school and the high school roof replacement is done as well. So um, things are moving along there. Very good. Do they have a total on all that stuff they're looking at? No, a lot of it's still open. This is going to be a very good exercise for the financial needs round table. Yeah, so I, I did update them on, you know, that there's a formal process from a, a triaging, if you will, of the projects and um, needs versus wants and um, mandates and, you know, quick summary of, right. of what we've laid out in print. So um, they're on it. Greg, are they adequately funded for maintenance of athletic fields? It's extremely important to maintain athletic fields, much more in your lawn and home? Well, there, that I'm not sure of, but that was certainly uh, part of the premise is about <coughs> irrigation. They said, why do all this construction if we're not going to have the proper irrigation to maintain the that's, facilities? That's correct. And then uh, that's how they got into the um, restroom facility as well, to make sure you're that's serving correct. the public who maybe increase traffic down there. Yeah, but they were, they were all in agreement at the beginning anyway that the uh, elementary school is most likely going to be their number one request from the windows doors and mm -hmm. the envelope, as they called it. So that's what we have from the Board of Ed. Thank you, Okay. Well, I have nothing to report. I'm still trying to schedule with my folks. I have nothing to report. Hopefully next meeting. All right. Thank you. Tracy. Nope. 
Okay, great. Um, old business. The only thing on the old business that I want to point out was you have a, a copy in your stuff here of the library. Um, Of the information to report on the facilities planning. We made sure that copy was included. Mm -hmm. Nothing more on that. Did you have anything? No, this was you had all asked for a copy of it. And we go by and do one step and stand over and tell you. Pretty much exactly what he said. Yeah. <laughs> I think it'd be a good idea. It was dated when it was produced. Is it, is it recent? Is this year? I have no idea. Maybe, maybe two years ago. It is two years old. Hmm. So we can find out. It yeah. wasn't an official I just, study? It was all that I had. That yeah. All that was presented. It would be nice if we could put a date on yeah. it. True. Because they, as they point out there, a study was done 25 years ago with ideas. You know, this, this comes <coughs> out. It would just be nice to put a date on it. Okay, moving on to. Uh, oh, hold it. Just a minute, Bill. I'm sorry. Did you have another question? I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, in our last meeting, we voted that to recommend to the Board of Selectmen they form a library building committee, study committee. And how is that? How's that coming along? That has a move to the next administration. Next administration. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else under? You leave a to-do list when you're on, on your last yeah. day. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else from old business? I know you've overlooked. Thank you, Todd. All right, so <laughs> I'm looking here under new business, and I said, okay, we have the meeting calendar. And I think what I confused is the meeting calendar with the budget meeting. Um, so bear with me and forgive me. But what we have here on the on the the meeting calendar we'd already discussed. I wanted you just to look at that. But I did mention before the budget meeting schedule, these are the dates that we're looking at doing all the legwork that we typically do in our budget season. So again, check these against your schedule, and we'll look forward to maybe starting to work on scheduling these things today. I know you have a new board coming up, so we'll probably put it out there in November and vote again. Then we vote in December. Right. So this is the opportunity for everybody to take a look and see if there's any. We problems. collect dates into January, so you're not. Right. We don't have to do I'm it by a certain date. Hold the calendar that I usually send out until we after always, elections. You, this board, we always do it where you set the schedule the January meeting as well. So you have till your December meeting to finalize this. Okie dokie. It's a built-in cushion. As we mentioned before, the public works project update was incomplete because of the conflicts on the calendar, so we don't have that under our new business for today. Um, next item on our agenda is guest and audience comment, and there are none. We'll move forward on that. Item 13, other. Uh, I'm going to go through the uh, board members and see if there's any other issues I may not cover. No. None. I have no issues at this time. Tracy. Just thank you to, for your service to Greg and Emmett. Mm. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Yeah, we really, it was a, this has been a very good board, good people to work together, and we really appreciate all the efforts that you've done, and we, we've gotten a lot done. So with that, I'm going to ask Mr. Lawyer to make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> okay. May I have a second? A second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so move. Good night and thank you. Beautiful. Ooh. <laughs> thank you. Cindy, we, we can't meet with you tomorrow night because I want Bruce there as well. And then it's a meeting and we missed a 24 hour notice, didn't we? So there's no way we can, Bruce and I can meet with you. Leave it. No, she's going to constitute an emergency meeting. I'll be back. Been, been good? And I, uh, oh, you're settled. Thank you. Now that you're all done, we definitely have to get done sometime. <laughs> yes. So, uh, if you want to, if you have a minute now, stop my office. I can ask you other questions. Okay. But the uh, the election, you have nothing to worry about. I'm quite sure.